All right, now for part two of volume three. And this is a, an episode considerably later on in our production schedule, which featured quite prominently the character of Fred Johnson, the one-armed man. This was an example of how, in the course of a long-running series, the producers will sniff out what particularly appeals to an audience and build on it. The character of the one-armed man <clears throat> was referred to as having been at the scene of the murder of Kimball's wife, and it, el uh, it elicited an enormous amount of enthusiasm and interest from the audience. And so, more and more, the one-armed man, played by Bill Raish, was introduced more prominently into our stories. Now, Bill Raish himself was a genuine one-armed man who had originally been a dancer. And uh, he served in the Merchant Marine, the US Merchant Marine, during the war, in the course of which he lost his arm. And so he couldn't go back to dancing. And he took up doing stunts, appearing in pirate films as a one-armed man and so forth. And originally, he appeared more or less as a walk-on. Uh, I think he was in a bus station or somewhere, in our Fugitive series. Well, his appearance, as I say, provoked such an immense interest that uh, Bill started to appear more and more prominently, and in this uh, episode in particular, which <coughs> is called Wife Killer. And uh, there's a sharp female reporter who spots the one-armed man caught in a police roundup of s suspicious characters and suggests in print that this might be the missing one-armed man in the Kimball case. Well, both Kimball and Gerard see this story and come to this town. And Kimball, hoping that this may well be the man, uh, whereas Gerard, knowing that Kimball is bound to turn up there, makes his way there too. And Kimball arrives first, goes to the jail where he can only just watch as the one-armed man actually escapes. Well, the reporter finds Kimball outside the jail and agrees to help him in exchange for an exclusive story, of course, of the one-armed man's capture. And then a car chase infuse, ensues and the one-armed man runs off the road near a deserted summer camp and Kimball and the reporter take him there and Kimball struggles to keep him alive, at least long enough to confess. But meanwhile, Lieutenant Gerard is searching the area. Here then, an, an episode first aired on January the 11th, 1966, entitled Wife Killer, with Janice Rule and Kevin McCarthy, as well as one-armed man Bill Raish. Johnson, can you hear me? I'm doing everything I can to save him. And I'm going to keep on trying, but you have to tell me the truth, and you have to tell me now. Did you kill him? Did you kill my wife? The Fugitive. A QM production. Starring David Jansen as Dr. Richard Kimball. An innocent victim of blind justice, falsely convicted for the murder of his wife. Reprieved by fate when a train wreck freed him en route to the death house. Freed him to hide in lonely desperation, to change his identity, to toil at many jobs. Freed him to search for a one-armed man he saw leave the scene of the crime. Freed him to run before the relentless pursuit of the police lieutenant obsessed with his capture. The guest stars in tonight's story, Janice Rule, Kevin McCarthy, also starring Barry Morse as Lieutenant Philip Gerard. Tonight's episode, Wife Killer. Baked the fatted calf? Marched on the brass bands? Well, something like that. Mm. 
How are you, Barbara? How do I look? Restless. Nah, just busy. Romping my way through middle age with flash gun and lipstick. They painted the police station. Looks yummy. There's no new angle if that's what you're looking for, Barbara. The congressman's wife was surprised by a prowler, and he panicked and killed her. And uh, that's all there is to it. The other two wire services have put that out two or three times already. Well, I'll write it again if I have to, but differently. Through the eyes of the hometown gal. Still competing, huh? And winning. Don't worry. I'll give it to you if I dig anything up after I put it on the wire service. All right, thank you. Old Chief Blaney's as imaginative as ever, picking up transients. Five dollars to three dollars, he gets his man that way. No bet, you're too lucky. Where the devil is he keeping all of them? Never been more than eight people in that jail, even on New Year's Eve. He's fenced in the parking lot out back. A regular concentration camp. Charming. Let's take a look. Excuse us, please. We got a uh, more interesting type of uh, transient here than you do in the big city, wouldn't you say? No new angles, huh? Whistle, Herb. Make that man look up, will you? Who? The guy with the one arm missing. What for? You told me once a reporter had to have a memory like a sponge. Remember the Richard Kimball case? How he kept talking about oh, the guy? Oh, come on, Barbara. Why do you want to get some poor bum into trouble you never saw it before in your life? Hey, mister, look up, will you? A fugitive is usually a man without a goal, aimlessly fleeing the furies that pursue him. But for Richard Kimball, there is a goal, a phantom who has himself become a fugitive. And Richard Kimball, in turn, now becomes the hunter. But another hunter is also on the move. is uh, Walter Barker. He's confessed to killing Congressman Gilman's wife. A transient? Yes, he's got quite a record. The M.O. fits, and so do the fingerprints. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm having copies of the confession made for you. Uh, well, I guess that's it. Chief, hold it for a second. Oh, thank you. You've all been very cooperative, and I appreciate it. Oh, I'm sorry it didn't turn out to be more exciting. Hey, Chief, how many arms does Walter Barker have? Oh, at least two. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad, Barbara. Looks like you missed your, uh, what's that word? Well, stoop, isn't it? No, no, that can't be right. Uh, snoop? I think the word is scoop, and you say it when you run in and yell, stop the presses. That's if you can run in high button shoes. <laughs> Don't sweat it, Barbara. The story didn't get anybody killed this time. There's only one thing wrong with the newspaper business. That's the people in it. Come on. I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Clowns. No, no, no. They're not clowns. They're newspaper men and good ones. You want that coffee? All right. <laughs> 